All right, thank you very much. Hello, everybody. It's your good friend Possible here, and I'm back in action with another look at another movie to help get us ready for Halloween. And what movie am I picking out today? Well, today I'm going to pick out a classic that I've been wanting to see for a long time, and I finally got a chance to watch The Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. You know, when it comes to movie monsters, especially the Halloween movie monsters, Wolfman, Invisible Man, um, Dracula, Frankenstein, the creature from the Black Lagoon, <clears throat> and the like, there's always been one that I always felt got a bad rap, mostly because, well, he's not in that category, and that is the Scarecrow. Not this movie, exactly, but I'm just saying the Scarecrow in general. It's just such a perfect idea for a villain. And they actually did a pretty good job with this movie, Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. Uh, basically, the movie is about a retarded man who is friends with a younger lady, even though... You know, he's obviously bigger and stronger. He's She is definitely smarter than he is, okay? And you get that right off the bat. But they're friends, good friends, that kind of childhood innocent friend that we've all had back in our days. That said, there's a time when he is accused of killing her. And this is when the real horror begins because vigilantes go after him and they find him hiding. Where was he hiding? That's right. He was hiding inside the scarecrow mask. Now, he didn't actually do anything wrong, but the vigilantes gunned him down anyway. And, and the prosecutor really wanted to prosecute those bag, those vigilantes, while at the same time, the mom wants justice for her son. So you have sort of a who done it, or should I say who's doing it. There is a mistake in the title of this movie. It is not the Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. It is the Dark Knights of the Scarecrow. It goes over several days. This is not a very quick movie. Uh, it's just 90 minutes, don't get me wrong, but they spread this movie out several days. It's a slow process. You know, there's that haunting moment when the next victim looks over into the field, looks into the, in the distance, and sees the scarecrow. Now, he goes over to the scarecrow, but all he sees is straw. Doesn't think there's anything to be afraid of. So you do get the impression that someone else is doing this. And the one thing I liked about this movie, the more than anything else I liked about this movie, is that you never really saw who done it until the very end. And at that moment, it was pretty terrifying. You know, they, this is one of those movies that leaves you with a haunting image. Okay? And, um, and I liked it. But do I recommend it? Well, that's the question for Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. You see, I liked the format, and I liked the storyline ideas, but I didn't quite care for the pacing. I felt it was too long in areas, and it was too stretched out. The only reason it kept my interest was because I didn't know what was going to happen next, and I didn't know um, who was really doing it. Was it possible that there was actually someone pretending to be the scarecrow that was doing this? That was my question, and, uh, and it's a mystery that you have to solve when you actually watch the movie. But I give it a decide. You know, I found it to be good, you know, your typical slaughter. The, the true genius of slaughter movies was never how many they killed, but how they killed them. And these were inventive ways of killing people, as you can imagine. You know, pretty painful, pretty grotesque, and all that other good stuff. But, uh, but that's what these horror movies are all about. That's why we love them so much. When it comes to Dark Knight of the Scarecrow, like I said, I give it a side. It had some very clever moments, but it had a very slow pace. Uh, so you're going to have to juggle that one for yourself and see if it's worthy or not. All right, guys, that's it for me for now. We'll see you at the theaters.